permit. I don't care if you buy a permit. Do you know how little I actually care if you have a permit? <laughs> about the fact that he received no support uh, from that. I, I think Boat has some Yes, uh, I some do. Oh, I got some leaks for you. Yeah. Like, can't, simple, can't simple shit like that. No, oh, simple oh. shit like that. If he I need, can't answer I that public... In. I need to break in because I need more original every week. That's that's a goal. That's do you really actually get oh, paid for uh, that? Because you, you, you deserve money for that last one. That one I'm was gonna, a fucking uh, amazing no setup. Drinks. Helps if I push the mic. Push the mic. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Push Talk, another edition. Um, we did not send out a ping because the ping bot thing was not working. So uh, if you showed up and you're saying hi, hi. Thanks for showing up and, and being here. We're a little bit late. In fact, we're a lot late because we're trying to say, hey, can we get a ping out? And uh, we haven't done it. So Dirk should be uh, here shortly. So we'll have Dirk along. Right now we've got uh, Mist with us. Right, Mist? Yes, yes, I am yes. present. Miss setup is NDI stream, uh, uh, so uh, we are 100% off of Zoom. Hey, Wackdabber, how you doing? And, and Oak and Ralph, thanks. True story, I love it. The um, so couple things, couple things this week. Um, I got a new stream deck because you know Black Friday sale, 50 bucks off. I grabbed one. I've been playing with it. It's pretty cool, but it looks like when it goes from our uh, from our intro screen over to our main screen. I don't know why it does that funky little transition. So uh, we'll have to work it's on the that. the transition for to grab people's attention and be like, wow, yeah. they're professionals. <laughs> They've got transitions. Yeah, but it shows the main screen here and then bammo, nothing, right? It's like going back to the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what else we lost this week? And I'm not sure why. We lost the chat heads. From uh, from the Discord talk heads. They're not showing up. Oh, you know why? You know why? Because they are showing up, but uh, Eric was bad. And he didn't have Craig join. See that? Wait, uh, wait. everybody's going to hear this, right? Everybody hears how Craig joins. Craig's our, our recorder bot. Did Craig join? Now recording. There we go. It's a good thing we're not a professional podcast. No, we're not professional. We're, we're part-time, reserve, windy, place kick, holder, podcasters, whatever we do. You know what I, do you know what I bought in my um, Black Friday mega sales? What did you buy in your Black Friday mega sales? This, we should have said this is the Black Friday edition. The, the regret edition of the expensive stuff that we all brought. So, uh, yeah, if you guys bought something cool in chat, just, uh, just share it with us um, because, uh, because we'd like to know. But I bought a stream deck for me. That's, that's what you do on Christmas, right? You buy yourself a gift, right? Is that what happens? Basically, it's weird. Like, 
when you're at a certain age, when you go past the magic of Christmas, it's like, well, I could give you a gift now, or uh, I could give you a gift in a couple of days when it's all on sale for the post-Christmas sale things. Like, I have thought about you. The gift idea had been thought, but look, you get more for your money by waiting a couple of days. I don't know. I don't know. I have uh, my wife has the unenviable position, like my mother, to have a December birthday, and um, so my wife's birthday is actually today. So right after the show, I've got to hurry my butt out and uh, go buy her a birthday cake, uh, so that we can have that. So that'll be that'll be good. Or you can get that Uber to your house or something. Uber, <laughs> you know, Whole Foods does deliver. I might be able to swing that. So anyway, um, you had some, uh, should we should we start with Eve or non-Eve stuff, or I'll let the audience decide. Um, the, should our first story be Eve stuff or um, non-Eve stuff? Bose soundbar, all oh, nice. Let's see. Uh, right, nobody nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care. Let's, um, let's, by the way, I, is that the sound I, of someone else joining? Is that the sound of somebody else joining? <gasps> Dirk is here. He said his sound was a little funky, though, earlier. We've Eve stuff. Ah, uh, whack, yeah. wick, wick dabbler, wick dabber, wick dabber, says, uh, we have to start with Eve stuff. So, Miss, you get to pick an Eve thing. I'm going to see if I can fix the chat heads while you talk about an Eve thing. Well, we've got... Do we have to talk about Eve thing? Yeah. So I'm being paid money under the table, or I hope to be get paid money under the table for talking about Eve things. You shill, you. You filthy shill. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm going to start shilling for something, and then hopefully they go, well, that's worth the exposure. And they're going to start giving me yiskies. For your toonies? Yes. So we can replace all the dead war coolies. Oh, did we, did we lose orc orcals? That's terrible. That brings a tear to my eye. That's yeah, we lost like... Did you not literally read the news or see anything? <laughs> no, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Okay, ah, so... you know what? I think Discord's having an outage right now because I can't get to the uh, widgets to uh, fix the Discord feed, so we're going to go without it. But there's only three of us, so it shouldn't be that confusing. Go ahead, continue, please. So, the Hypernet Relay is coming. Oh, God. On the 10th of December. We don't know the patch notes because CCP's like, yeah, let's leave it till Monday to put the patch notes out. And... I don't know if you know, there's a very expensive ship that's being planned to be put onto the Hypernet Relay. Very, very expensive, very rare item, the Raven State Issued. The, ra the Raven State Issue? Yep, only four were ever created and given out at the Alliance Tournament free back in 2006, I believe. Huh. Yeah, uh, I think at least one is dead as well. So Apparently it's not. Apparently none have been killed. All four are still alive. Unless if anyone can find any on the killboard. I haven't actually looked onto the killboard if anyone's even used it. By the way, I did update our, uh, our, our title. Um, in the ping that was supposed to go out, we were, we were titled Push to Talk. The Summer's Eve Online Edition. So, that was to play into your uh, Raven story. Uh, yeah, no Raven and, stations and, and, and perhaps, ever killed. And perhaps a, a certain hygienic product, but, you know. Uh, what is Mist looking up? Are you looking some stuff up, Mist? Yeah, I was just looking at the uh, kills, like, the Raven State issue, um, no no kill, no no deaths, so all four are still in existence, but the most recent kill was a rook in 
Point four. Um, yeah, a rope yeah. like today. Yes. Oh, I see what will have happened there. What happened there? I I think I understand what that is. That's oh. uh. That's a very well known PVPer in in Eve Online, Rain Chocolate. Uh, also one of the co-hosts on Talking in no, not Talking in Stations, Open Comms. Yeah. Apologies, Open Comms. Um, and yeah, chances are they're letting her use it to uh, to raise the profile of the ship before uh, before it goes live on the Hypernet Relay next week. The Hypernet yeah, Relay. I mean, it, it. You know, this isn't track and field, right? I mean, I mean, why, it why is it cool, called though, right? the Hypernet Relay? Because it's like the network across the whole thing going fast. Like, you lose your money at hypernet speed. But why relay? I, like I said, it sounds like a relay race in track and field. I mean, am I crazy? Anybody else Anybody else think that? Or is it just me? It takes a lot of people to do a relay, and in the end of the day, there's only a few winners. CCP just fire in the summer. <laughs> there's only one. Everyone way. else is collapsed on the floor, exhausted from losing all of their money. <laughs> and, and Hilmar's there like count the skis at the bank baby yeah so, you go, well thanks Pushmaster thanks thanks the, the only lot. time the only time this ship has been used before was back in 2017 so it's been two years that they've been away mm. would, would have been awkward would have been a really awkward conversation if that ship when it went on to kill this um killed a fork because something happened to it and it got DC'd and trapped and killed, right? That would be a tad bit awkward. True, true, true. So, uh, don't we get uh, on the 10th, don't we get some other changes too, right? We, I mean, we get the hypernet relay, which is get, which is um, underage gambling. Consoles. Which is underage uh, gambling. We uh, get the wallet UI change. Wallet actually. UI change. Is it is it good or is it crappy? Uh, it's... It's very much more 2019 level UI in terms of like, it, it's a very pretty graphical interface. Uh, I have heard from a number of people though that they actually find that they found the functionality is a little bit worse. Now, hmm. I don't know if this is just people not being used to it. And so they're going like, Oh yeah, I, I don't know how to u do things in this fancy new interface, or if it's just uh, or if it just is you know collectively worse. But yeah, uh, apparently it's uh, not massively popular with market traders, at least. Okay, well, wouldn't those be the people you'd want to keep happy with a change like this? You would think. Yeah. But, okay. I mean, call me know. crazy. I mean, some people have, and five people will probably in chat, and that's I okay. I mean, you are crazy. You're. I mean, have you that. seen like how old bloomer terminals look like on Wall Street and everything like that? No. It's like really old-fashioned back in the day, graphs and charts and stuff. It's no, it's not good looking. It's not sexy at all or anything like that. And I think that's kind of what happened. We've gone from the really old graphs and charts into the possible good-looking, sexy numbers and peels, which doesn't really work in a market trading environment. Okay. I'll have to look I at mean, it. It's, it's probably out there in, in, in CZ, right? Yeah, it's up on Singularity at the moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll go look at it. also live on the uh, EVE portal app. For your smartphones. Oh, so yeah, we check it out right now. We do have a quick question, uh, Balgost. Uh, also, are we supposed to be getting a Teen Towers update two weeks later? I'm not sure if they said. I'm sure that they said the tenth is a bigger one than normal because a two week update on Christmas Eve would not be practical with people going home to see their loved ones. I mean, if this and is any bigger than normal update then I don't know what their normal updates are going to look like, because yeah. this uh, this kicking over castles thing seems roughly about the same size as the, the previous Team Talos releases, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, but they're also yeah. doing the free market update 
hypernet relay, kicking over castles, probably other stuff they've forgotten about. Maybe there's a new Triglavian thing coming. Yeah, I mean, you know what? They're going to drop on Christmas Eve or right before Christmas Eve. They're going to drop the, a new patch. And Dirk, you and I are going to be online for the next four days, 24 7, fighting off drifters <laughs> on stations. Fighting. That's the what they're going to do. Fight. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. So, uh, Sikander Cole, thank you very much for three months of subscriptions. We do appreciate that. Um, that helps support everything that goes on on INN. So, we appreciate it. And anybody else, remember if you got Amazon Prime, your sub is free. Well, there so. is the um, the update on the seventeenth, which is the well. This is me thinking they're going to push an update on the seventeenth for the Christmas campaign because the Christmas campaign is thirteen days long. So we put it on the seventeenth. It lasts till the thirty-first, hmm. um, and that is your snowball. Um, that is your winter gear. Mm -hmm. Some of the some of the best looking Christmas skins. I mean, I'm looking forward to buying the Jackdaw one because it's got like it's like a red and green one with Christmas lights, and it's got Christmas lights on the end of the four fins that deploy. So it's like I I'm looking forward to buying that skin and actually going on a fleet and using it. See, so yeah. having the graphics turned up a little so I can see it. So, so we have a question out there on what is the kicking over castle stuff, and Gunny Dupont uh, responded a little bit on them. But uh, you know, one of the big things, and I'm I'm kind of holding off on some of the things we were talking about, Dirk, for this patch to come in because I think it helps us in the thing we want to do. Yeah, uh, I, I think it probably does. Um, this patch is a is an interesting one. Um, so, what it is basically is uh, a lot of changes to structures. Uh, most, well, basically just citadel structures, upwell structures. Um, and yeah, it's, it's designed to kind of try and take away some of the time zone tanking issues and such that are, uh, that are horrendously prevalent in basically all, uh, areas of space you know if you're uh if you're really strong in one time zone but you're being attacked by somebody who's also strong in your in your time zone what you want to do is shift it to a different time zone that you're still relatively capable in but um your attacker is not and so you know you end up seeing EU Prime Alliances uh, timing their structures for like the dead of uh, the the kind of ghost time zone in between US time zone and uh, Asian time zones and stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, this this update is trying to a attack that a little bit. Um, so there's a there's a change in how long uh, the final timer. Uh, the the hull reinforcement timer exists in um, wormhole space and low and null and high sec. So all areas of space can change there. Um, there's a, a change. They're lengthening how long it takes you to change your reinforcement time of day. Uh, so that's now going to be a full month instead of a, just a week. Right, seven um, to thirty days. Right. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, ADMs coming into into play with um, with upwell structures. This is a this is a good sign, I think. Introducing uh, solve aspects to citadels kind of suggests that maybe CCP are trying to come around to this idea that the solve system needs a rework. And whoa, you know, whoa, sorry, almost fell out of my chair. When you said like that. that CCP might understand the soft system needs fixed? But... I mean, I can but hope. Um, so yeah, uh, basically what this means is that if your ADM is above four and uh, you hold a, an infrastructure hub in that system, uh, anybody who's not a part of your alliance can't drop medium structures. Yes. So Astrohuses, Athenors, and Raitarus. This is like big. 
I'm sure Eric, maybe Mistborn as well, you probably both remember, uh, I think it was two years ago, when uh, Pandemic Horde dropped a bunch of structures that were all set to come out during Christmas Day. Yeah. I, like I, I remember that. It was one of my big things I reported on. Yeah, it was fabulous. And, uh, I, I spoke to Goblins, Gobbins about Goblins. I've probably just butchered his name about that. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing, mate? In <laughs> <laughs> right to speak. <laughs> it's like, talk to me, talk to me, what's going on? He was like, oh, it's just a little bit of banter. I'm like, all right, cool. And I spoke to other people. I, I vaguely remember on Christmas Day, me writing and talking to people and getting all this, um, getting all this stuff pushed up. Because it was a very interesting but that basically gives people a reason to live in the space that they own and not just own it to have a bigger bigger dick, but actually to live in and use it. And then you're not going to get mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. people putting down these rat hotels, retiree hotels, because it's like 500 million isk to build up a structure that's probably going to last six days if they come and kill it in awkwardly tanked in a time zone. If it dies, it dies. If it doesn't, it gives you that forward staging point to send people out mm -hmm. from. So having it, so it now has to be a Fort Azar or a, um, it's going to remove it. It's going to make it a lot less people things that people are just going to casually spam. Yeah. yeah and uh, also, this is the, um, if you remember as well, when uh, they did the changes to Bushing and uh, that that kind of mechanic. Uh, CCP also introduced a rule where jump gates and sino jammers have to be more than 500 kilometers away from a structure now. Yeah, uh, that was fun. This is like uh, on December 10th. That's your last day, I think, or maybe the, the 12th. I, I can't remember the precise date they said, but uh, in Kicking Over Castles, basically, yeah. Uh, if you haven't moved those already, you're going to be forced to because those structures will be offline if they are still within 500 kilometers from so, any structure. So that's that's like one of those changes that I didn't get why they wanted to make that. Uh, it puts it out of keep star range. Like, if let's say I want to hit your gate, right? I want actually, you know what? I want content. So I'm going to get my boys and I'm going to go into your system of space. And I'm going to go find some content. The best way is door knocking, literally going to a gate and shooting it. Because it's very like, important. Basically, jump gates are the equivalent of 10 year olds playing knock a door run. Yeah. That's um, act, I, I love that in a video game when I have activities that remind me of a 10 or 12 year old, especially when. Yeah. 26 year olds do smack talk like they're 12 but yeah, uh, yeah that more on that later you go and attack that gate and you hope and you basically you hope that someone's going to come through to try to save the gate on the other side the issue is that before it was under the shadow of a keep star so the keep star can just go low fire off a doomsday every what 10 minutes mm -hmm. and you'll start bleeding stuff and then the next day, they'll probably have something ready to go to protect it. And again, you have to face that doomsday from the GPR. So now it's outside of 500k. You've got to form up a response fleet for these gates. To, to finish my uh, knock it or run metaphor then, basically, previously, we had a ballista hiding behind the door that would just take out the 10-year-olds. Now we can't have our ballista. Which is unfortunate. I I quite like the idea. I know. But I, 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 it's one of those changes I I don't think brings tremendous value to the game other than annoying people. And that's what we want to do, is annoy people who play the game. What? So. I've never heard this phrase before. Hi, by the way. Hi, RJ. Ding dong ditch. Ding dong Ding. ditch, baby. <laughs> Ding dong ditch. Knock it or run. Knock it or run. Yeah. It, not gonna run sounds more like you know something you do in college when you're at a party. A, I learned a southern one the <laughs> other day. I learned a southern one called rolling. You go roll rolling a house. What's rolling a house? That's a southern that, phrase I've not heard. TP in a house. Really rolling a house? Oh yeah. Hey man, we're gonna go roll a house. Come on, we're gonna go down, down the way and roll a house. That's 
Somebody moved to the south, by the way, uh, and that might be RJ. So something, something south, something, something war eagle. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. Um, we so. so what? Say say that again. We did have a question about how this impacts uh, coalitions living in other people's space because mm -hmm. obviously the Imperium owns the on one banner. So if somebody from outside wants to put a structure down, the owners of the Sol space can still put that structure down and then just transfer over the ownership. It effectively stops somebody just coming in and randomly dumping a structure. So you can still you can still get the same effect on friendly terms. You mm -hmm. just get somebody to someone in the Imperium to put a structure up and then transfer over to the Coalition Alliance. That's the same anywhere now. Which is good. It rewards you for living in your space. Um, yeah. it's, it's not going to change gonna... any of the yeah. way our processes work. So, I have a question for you guys. I'm going to take you away from Eve now. Oh dear. Yes. So, so... Do we know about the Peloton controversy with their latest commercial? Anybody out there know? Peloton? What is this? Peloton, it's a stationary bike that's really super expensive, like over $2,200 for a stationary bike, right? But it's okay. got this beautiful video screen. You know what would be cool? If we had that Peloton bike and that beautiful video screen, if we could play Eve on it while we, while we you know, exercised. But, um, but you can't. I mean, Basically, they shoot you videos. You subscribe to a monthly service after you buy this sucker. And you, uh, you know, they have like spin classes. You know what they are, right? So, Guys so saying, you're, you're paying twenty two hundred dollars, yeah. for a stationary exercise bike. Yes, it's got a lovely multimedia system on it. Mm -hmm. But all you can do with that multimedia system is these Go bits watch. of classes that you then have to yes. pay the company more money. Yes, yes. to access. Yes. Yes. So I've got yes. a recumbent bike that's also a rower and a large iPad that I just set to the side, and it's like three hundred bucks, and I can use the iPad anywhere else. That so, is, so the cool. question is, they they released a commercial, and, and if you guys want to watch it later, I'll put it. I'll put the commercial. There it is. It's in the thingy. Um, but basically, this commercial came out, and everybody said it was like super sexist. Okay. okay, so there was all this backlash against the commercial. So they redid the commercial, by the way, and they took the husband out of it, and it's just the woman that's in there. But uh, I don't okay. know how is how is this get your fan less sexist? Uh, I it, <laughs> most people how I talk to about this, including my wife, said not sexist. Okay, how are they, how are they making this less sexist? So just anyway, to, uh, they just took the husband out. They made it less sexist. They said. <laughs> So, so anyhow, wait, 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 wait. So there's just a controversy. Let's just take it for granted there's a controversy that this is a okay. little bit sexist, right? So I take it that most of you know who Ryan Reynolds is, right? Okay. So yeah. you know who Ryan Reynolds is, you know, guy who played Deadpool 2 and All Deadpool right, yeah. 1, right? And um, funny guy, really funny guy. And he owns his gin company. So <laughs> everybody said that this woman was mistreated so badly by her husband. He then hired her. To do another commercial for his gin company. Okay. And she's at there at the bar. Going to have some drinks with her girlfriends. And we're going to show that video. Okay. You okay with that? Can we go into that? Because I want to play with my stream deck. Okay, here we go. So, there's the setup. Right? Sexist commercial. Probably getting divorced from her husband after this one. Right? at the bar with her girlfriends. Here we go. In before we get copyright straight. This gin is really smooth. Yeah. We can get you another one if you like. You're safe here. To new beginnings. To new, to new beginnings. beginnings. There you go. It's gonna be a fun night. There you go. Take this too. Oh, really? Mm hmm. You look great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, every okay. guy, every guy out there is going. I want to be at that bar, aren't you? That's, that's You're pretty all funny. thinking that. 
You're all thinking that, right? So he just I hired thought... her to do this, and it's like it was like it was funny. So he tweeted it out the other day. So it was funny. I liked it. Plus, I want to just try and run a video with the new stream deck. So, hey, Jalen. The stream died for me the, the moment the clip started playing. Did it really? Yes. I can, I can send you the link to it. the whole thing on the stream. Just go to Ryan Reynolds' uh, tweet, Twitter account. Like, in tw you don't tweet, do you? You don't go to Twitter, do you? Uh, I, do, I do actually have a Twitter for Anger Games. <laughs> So, so yes, yes, Wick Dabber. That probably, that probably, that probably was. Maybe, maybe I just said that because guys want to meet nice girls. Could be true story. I, I like the fact that it's named aviation. That's cool. Well, flying things. I'm going to encourage everybody. Not that I don't like gin, so I don't drink gin. Okay. Um, if I want to chew on pine needles. I can go outside, pick some in my yard, and chew on them. Okay, so I hate gin. I hate the flavor. Um, but I would encourage you to go to the Aviation Gin um, YouTube page. Just search for it and just watch his commercials. They're hilarious. Every one of them. It's just super funny. Especially the one introducing them on, on how they care for the juniper berries. And, uh, you know, and... and how they bless the gin before it leaves. It's great. There okay. is, there is one alcohol uh, ad, however, that's better than Ryan Reynolds' gin ads. What is? Do you, do you know the guy who played uh, the the mountain on uh, on Game of Thrones? Yeah, the yes. 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 Yeah. yes, 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 yes. And um, he brought out uh, a vodka. Oh. I mean, it's a better choice than gin, for sure. Yeah, and the ads are just hilarious. Didn't he have a water brand, too? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Like, the, the water was shaped like giant dumbbells. <laughs> like, it was like, super heavy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, water is, what, 10 pounds per gallon, so approximately. Yeah, he's like, like, those commercials, the water commercials are hilarious. <laughs> I like funny Sorry. commercials. So, yeah, uh, question in chat. How are yeah. goons doing lately? Because he, uh, the, the viewer saw some of uh, our dudes in low sec getting solo PvP on. Um, how are we doing, goons? I don't believe it. Go goons don't understand low sec. Goons don't understand the concept no. of solo PvP either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, we don't why, is he, why is the F1 rubbed off this key? I don't... I don't understand why that's a problem. Why? why I, don't, that... I don't get why you all still have your first high slot on F1. Like, how is it that no one thinks of like actually putting that on a on a useful key instead of F1? Because we're doomed. So we, we don't know how to do anything apart from pressing but then, the F1 button. But then I couldn't be an F1 monkey. I mean. I I can be like a semicolon monkey, but that's just not as cool as F one. Oh, yeah. I just be a full stop monkey, but or a crocodile mouth to the left or a crocodile mouth to the right monkey. It just doesn't have the same ring. Oh, crocodile no, mouth? Not. What's what's is that what the, the greater or less than talking thing? about? Greater than or less than symbols or a crocodile mouth that is always going after the bigger number. I just realized something. Did, did Mist fall into the fact that Patriotic Tendencies is recruiting? Because I, I see a nice Sambi. I, I, oh, yeah, I did. I did. I thought that was me. <laughs> Sorry, Mist. I used the wrong, I used the wrong Mist Warden logo. But... Don't, don't apologize to him. That was accidental. I, I wish it was intentional, but it wasn't. <laughs> we are recruiting, though. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, we do have uh, our latest INN streamer member of uh, Patriotic Tendencies, Tam Tam Joint. So. Yep. Oh, you picked up Tam Tam. We, and, yes, and her boyfriend. So, yes, she joined. She came over. She asked me. This is a big drama misunderstanding thing, so I, I don't really care. Just have fun, please. Okay. Drama? There was, but we're not going to go into it. Oh, come on. Not on my part. I'm not a I'm not a party. Um, neither is Penned. Penned are not parties to whatever happened. So therefore, we are not gossiping about other things and things that happened. 
Come on, Larry. Nope. You know, you know, I love drama. I know you do, and we're not going to talk about it. Sorry, it make it make great viewer stuff, but it would be rude and inappropriate for me to do so. Speaking of drama, get her on the show so she can tell me about the drama. (laughs) You can can ask her. You can ping her. She she can get. I can give her access to anything she wants. She has access to. Uh, That that's dangerous. No, Tam Tam's very nice. I've played vi- mer- various video games with her, and and she's she's pretty fun. She's pretty nice. No, just the the general principle of yeah, they can have access to whatever they want. That's oh. a dangerous precedent. <laughs> That's what happens when you get married. You're just like, whatever. Yeah. How well, about that? We can talk about it on um, Push to Talk After Dark. Push to Talk After Dark. We need to do a Push to Talk After Dark. I think. Well, push to I Talk mean, After it Dark. It is After Dark here. So. Yeah, it's very dark. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, what, 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 hold it. Pooner was talking about, speaking of drama, how about that low tax thing? What, yeah, does well, anybody know what that is? I, I, I want some clarification on what he's, uh, talking about here. Cause... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do. He, we have a 15 second delay, obviously, because it's recast out of Twitch. Is an F2 monkey, um, worse than an F1 monkey? Hold it, he's uh, in a divorce. I don't I don't understand. Yeah, I I'm so confused. Yeah, I'm 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 very confused. Don't worry, we've got an absolute segue into the market haven tax thing that oh, that, oh, very that thing that had absolutely no real impact on Zero. anyone. Zero. It's 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 like something C C P did to flesh out the article. Um, buy skins. <laughs> it's like buy skins. Like, we... Buy skins. Tax holiday. Plex, and it's like, uh, what else could we do? I know if we add it so people can sell it and have a tax haven. Yes, that flashes out the article. The weird thing though was um, that they they called it buy now sell later or something of the like. Oh no, that was just missed one's headline. Yeah, that was my article because the idea is you could buy. You could buy from Thursday, now after downtime, but the tax haven came in on Friday, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, but that's um, That's not going to change anything about prices. It was twenty-four hours. It's just the CCP thing was: you buy this now, you wait twenty-four hours, then you can sell it with the tax haven. I mean, no, really, the CCP thing was: we're going to give you a plex sale now. And we've already talked about this new Hypernet Relay thing that, you know, you're going to have to use Plex to get cores to set up raffles for. And uh, so buy Plex, hold on to it, then give us the Plex back as you're buying your Hypercores to go gambling. Mm. Um, The thing about the tax haven, it was effectively the more higher level you had in accounting was the lower Sales tax. You That's had to how it pay. works. In uh, well, uh, welcome uh, to Eve. Just, that, that's how the market works, Mist. It was like <laughs> so. Um, it went from two point five to as low as one point two five. Is that better than normal? Yes, it's better than normal because they cut the tax that you would normally pay by fifty percent. But it, the the no, tax no, no, is no. so negligible anyway. One of the taxes. Just, just oh yeah, just taxes. just the sales tax. Yeah. They they didn't um, they didn't change anything to do with broker fees, but again, the taxes on market selling and shit like that are so negligible anyway that it was like okay, yeah, sure, I'll I'll take it. This is an extra like I don't know, it fifty isk like... in my pocket on a T two module. Sure, it, it feels like um a desperate attempt to get people back to trading in Jita instead of Perimeter? Well, yeah. Yeah, in, like, that's going to happen. In much the same way as they're uh, planning to let you do Plex sales through the phone app soon, but you'll only be able to do that in the new Jita 4.4 trade hub. You know, when, once they... I, I assume they're doing this once they've finished out all of the station upgrades that they're doing to the model. Well, mm. I mean, they've shown how good their timing is with uh, the push for the Korean market and how they perfectly lined that up with the remake of the MPE. Oh, wait. 
speaking of the MPE, a uh, little update on Mrs. RJ. I've, I've been managing her skill queue. That's the update. See, right <laughs> see, 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 I'll, I'll see how that went. I'm managing your skill queue. So uh, what no, you're no, saying no. is all that happened is you got another alt out of the deal. Uh, well, it's just sitting there. I'm not doing anything with it other than just, oh, Yet. it's still, it's still an alpha. Let me put another skill in there. If she comes back to it, she comes back to it. But yes, that's what the MPE did to somebody. So it's it, still, yeah. Yeah. This, so, this is where like RJ gets it to 5 million and she's still not come back. So he just turns it into like a, an extraction alt. Shh, don't there you go. Shh. Um, so we had a few questions, a few things chirping up in chat. Um, the tax haven thing was only for like 72 hours over the period. Uh, hypercores, will they change anything globally? I think uh, hypercores is just their get around system for the gambling stuff because when you buy Plex, you, you put real money in, you get Plex out, and then you swap those Plex for a hypercores. So then you use those hypercores to enable your raffle link. So maybe they required the hypercores as an extra step to get around the current laws. I'm not. I, I'm not wearing a suit. I'm not a broker. I don't have a broker hat on. I'm not a professional in the majority of the things I do. But that's just the way I see it. To answer the like more obvious question about will hypercores change anything globally? Um, yes, a little bit you will probably see higher Plex prices here. Because okay that. you need Plex in order to buy your Hypercores. You need Plex mm -hmm. in order to buy skins on the, the New Eden store, extractors. Um, you know, people still use Plex to subscribe their accounts. That still happens. So you're probably going to see Plex prices kind of react to the, the additional demand. But you probably also won't see that much of an increase in supply. This this has happened every time they've added a new demand on Plex recently. You know, prices fluctuate for a bit, and they always seem to settle out higher than they started and continuing to creep up. This is still where we're at. Like, Plex is mostly stable, but it's it's generally slowly creeping up. So you'll probably see that Yes, it probably will raise prices by how much. That's a, a different question. You kind of anything I said a, about that would be a guess, but I'm expecting Plex prices to go up as a result of uh, hypercores. I think this might actually uh, lead to some people leaving Eve, especially the people who who will um, use these a lot. Will will raffle a lot and then lose all their money. Hmm. I am actually going to go against the grain and say the whole apparatus of the relay will be an overall bust after the first sixty days. I'm I'm kind of expecting that too, but it'll still have an impact on the yeah. price prices. Yeah. Unless yeah. somebody, you know, and, and by the way, the, the beneficiary, the big winners in, in this re hyper relay thing um, will be some syndicates who get together and do it a lot. Okay. The, like, just the one-off guy selling something every once in a while, I don't think they're going to make much. As, it'll be the person who can, can make it a business, right? If it goes at all. But other than that, I think uh, Plex prices go down, actually, uh, because of this. And I think that um, it becomes a bust after 60 days. So um, the other thing is I want to thank uh, Jonathan and who's the other one? Dragon Scoils uh, for following the channel. So thank you very much, guys. We appreciate that here at uh, INN. Um, and by the way, for those who are new who think that we are INN, INN is not us. INN is the Imperium News Network's uh, streaming channel here. It is Fat B TV, and it is us, uh, this channel. There are a number of streamers who stream on all that you can see down below. So, Gambling Eve has been going on since Eve came online. CCP just wins math will be a profit. Yeah, we get it. 
Um, and uh, but McDabber, I, I I don't think they're gonna make that much. And somebody mentioned up above that the Korean streamers, Jalient, have already moved on to other games. Well, Is that true? they would have been. They would have been. They would have been. P C C P would have brought uh, some streamers for hire to stream the game for a week to show it off because. Remember, everyone just follows the herd. It's like you can you can hire mm. streamers to play your game if you want, and just show off and be enthusiastic about your product and or service. Um, you'd well, the other thing is the the other thing is that it was a big thing for the uh, G Star kind of convention. The, they they did make it a big thing. They had you know nice computer setups that were uh, you know available for people to play Eve there and then on the convention floor so it kind of follows that if this was big news in korea that there would be some korean streamers who pick it up and play it for a while and see how it feels mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um if they don't particularly enjoy what they're playing then they're going to move on to other games that's just the way it kind of works uh, I'm sure we've all done that where we've picked up a game, gone, this one isn't quite for me, and gone off to find something else. So I'm not going to flat out say that CCP have or have not paid streamers to play EVE. If they have, then, you know, whatever, it's their money. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it's too far out of the, the realm of possibility that... You know, these guys were just playing it because it was popular and people were talking about it, and now they've moved on to other things. Yeah. Well, Margaret Tycoon's comment, I I hope, is is not true. Um, but uh, but that would be bad. Uh, that would be bad. I can kind of understand it though. The new player experience, mm -hmm. not great. The initial tutorial, yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, but like, yeah, the the moment you just, I'm the, trying. The, the, the moment you hit the mission system, basically. The, um, the, that that's it. The moment you hit the career missions, you're just like. I'm trying to remember when I started. <laughs> it's scary, right? I can't remember if we had any new player experience anything back then i don't think we did i mean i think uh, you were just thrust into the game right no not not really you you still had the 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 quote unquote starter mission which um i mean it was all just text based right and and you had some pop-ups telling you hey now you got to do this and that mm. um it it was it wasn't very good but it, it was there. Okay. I just I just don't... It, it's scary to say I've played this game so long that I don't remember what it was exactly like the first day I played. Right? And... I mean, I remember getting tanked or, or blown up uh, in a, in a you know, asteroid belt because I didn't understand the mechanic that, hey, this dude stole the ore out of my can... And when I took it back, he was allowed to blow me up, right? I didn't do that. I, I, but I learned that the first time, right? And it was a shitty lesson, but I learned it. So, Sothersil, thank you for the uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, man. Take, take, my, take my free subscription. Take my free my subscription. Free Prime account. Take it. So, uh... So talking about Amazon, should did everybody see the video of people leaving goodies out for the Amazon people? Should we should we play that? Uh, I've not seen it. No. Really? I'm gonna play yeah, it because no. I get to push another button on my my stream thing, and so it's the last last video that's non Eve related. That thing so. is totally on my Christmas wish list. I okay. Hope I get one. And by the way, by the way, so I said I said to my wife, hey, we should do this, and she's like, yeah, we should, and then, you know, but I didn't have it. I. I, I was out buying the stuff and we had like six Amazon deliveries yesterday. And I'm like, oh, I guess we missed that opportunity. But here we go. Oh, this is nice. Oh, they got some goodies. Wow. Oh, this 
this is sweet. Oh wow. Get out of here. Wait for it. This Wait for is it. Sweet. What is this so nice? It's a dance at the end that I love. He's like, woohoo, free food, right? It's like free food at work, right? I mean, I don't know any of you guys work in corporate America, right? They have a big meeting, they have food, and then they bring it into like the, the I don't know, the little lounge area. And they say, hey, anybody want some free food? And everybody like who just ate lunch is in there to eat second lunch, right? I mean, that's how it works. But these Some guys... Surprises me that Americans, you don't have like mail slots. So people just leave your packages on the porch, as they would say. So uh, like in urban areas, you might have some mail slots, but in suburban areas and, and rural areas, you either have your mailbox out the front. And some of those may have a little place to put the paper for the day if you get the paper. And, um, you know, Amazon will just open your garage door and drop it off in your garage too. Um, so they, they have the Amazon key or the front porch. Yeah. Front porch is a big thing, which is why everybody has a video doorbells now, which that was recorded mm -hmm. on, right? Has those video doorbells, um, you know, in case somebody steals packages off their porch, right? You're like, We've ding, ding. You're like talking phone. I can see you stealing that package, mother. So we've got mail slots in, like in the UK, all of our doors have like slots yeah, in them that you can put letters and packages through. Yeah, but like a, you know, a, a one foot by one foot package isn't going to make it through your mail slot, is it? Yeah, but like DVDs and stuff uh, like yeah. that fits through. Like People use DVDs? Um, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I remember the original Sony Walkman, right? So, you know. DVDs. My kids don't have a music DVD. None of them do. Ages from nine to almost nineteen now. None of them have. They don't have DVD for uh, some music. Netflix stuff like that. They would actually send you the movie on a DVD. Yeah. You yeah. Can still do right. that with Netflix, actually, they they still offer that service. Uh, apparently, there's still, like a few million people a year that use it. It's kind of like weird to me at this point, but. So there are so, still places in the U.S. that are so rural that they really just don't have internet. Like, not ISDN, even nothing. I mean, the only thing... I mean, thing Eric, that... you can't talk about the Amish like that. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the Amish. Um, my uh, I, my I, sister's in-laws, sure, who... I'm not sure you can call have parts of New York rural. Like... Oh, yes. I mean, the city the or the state. state. The, the state. The city. Not the city, no, but the state. I I know I know there are parts of New York where you actually have trouble getting decent internet. And with decent internet, I mean like one k download. Have you have you been to New York? No. Okay. I've been to New York, New York has currently... Have I you been to the... My background? There are, like every major city in the U.S., there are just areas where, you know, hey, you're not going to have some of that service. I think this is New York as my background. I just literally typed into uh, Split a Camera <laughs> and said, city, yeah, we'll go with that. I've we'll been go to with New that. York, New York, and the internet was okay. Yeah. From my hotel suite that I was aware of. The uh but yeah, there I mean so I mean my sister's in laws who we we're like that big extended family, we go everywhere. Um, you know, we go out there for uh for Thanksgiving this year and they barely get good four G. I mean, it's it's just not really there. I mean you're really on three G or one G when you're out there. Um you know, he owns 300 acres of farmland and just keeps buying more. And uh, they love it out there, but internet-wise, they're, they're, they're dial-up still. And they're only 30 minutes away from where I live. And it's not uh, the, the, you know, the population, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't give them the, the, the profit margin or the, you know, it's not worth it to run the cables out there. Well, you know, at least you have the Germans come in and give you a uh, nationwide coverage of 5G with a big asterisk. 
in case you didn't southwest know. rural france you know what was it my sister went to a, a wedding for some of her husband's relatives who lived in france and wherever they were in france they didn't even have refrigerators it's... you've got to wonder about well this this whole thing really don't you you know here we are in the the 21st century about to hit you know the 2020s where's my fucking hoverboard just <laughs> where's my hoverboard <laughs> but um you know that p- people without fridges still you yeah. know well i mean this i mean it wasn't like last year it's probably in the last five or six years they were there right and they were at the wedding and everything and she said everything was just wonderfully fresh because it had to be right and it was i mean she said the food was fantastic it was a wonderful wedding but they really just didn't have the refrigeration so flying car jillian oh i went i went the flying car where is my george jetson experience right we're getting close right i facebook is putting the george jetson tv for you right you can have the george jetson tv where you talk to people right your your video conferencing you have it on your computer for sure we just need the little, you know, flying cars. I mean, Facebook's done that thing where they'll they'll sell you like a very expensive webcam for your TV, mm-hmm. along with some like software that goes on your yeah. smart TV that doesn't absolutely, you know, track all of your information at all. No, 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 no. Right. It just lets you, you know, talk to people on your TV. Yeah. Jelly, you kind of have a robot made with like those Roombas and things that'll vacuum your floor, which I think are amazing. I want to get the. Until, I don't want to. Pu- I, I can't. Oh yeah, no dog poo, right? But uh, I, the I, one I want is the one that you know it it drives up. We have other Roombas here. We have the older ones, and I want the one that comes up to its docking station, and the docking station sucks all the dirt out of it, and it's clean every time it goes out that's what i want jetpack i've, I've got to worry about jetpacks really like i'm I'm not sure i'm quite comfortable with the idea of like strapping rocket fuel to my back hmm well you, you, you have the water seats. pack right you can just think about it if we could figure out um how to manipulate gravity itself then you wouldn't use rocket fuel. You would just make yourself be uh, less affected by gravity, right? Uh, that's so, a bit of a, a long... So, that, that's that a is, very that is, long shot. So that's, that's the... Very, very science fiction. Yes. What is what is that? That's, uh, that's part of the Holtzman effect in Dune, right? Holtzman effect in Dune, where they have the suspensors, right? Where the lights follow them. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, they can levitate themselves... Um, and things of that nature that, yeah, that, that would be, that would be fun. Can you imagine, like, you don't need a, you don't need a, um, a, you know, table beside your, your sofa when you're watching TV, you know, you just take your drink and you just set it in the air and it just hovers until you come get it again. That'd be cool. I mean, space travel would become so much easier because we wouldn't need all this rocket fuel to just get up there, right? Yeah, is it, um, wasn't there some claim, and I don't know how true it is, that um, they were close to something like the warp drive or something Um, with forever fuel manipulating something? Yeah, kind of. There are rumors. I don't know how that. real that was. Like, right. The closest warp we probably drive. come is ion drives, to be honest. Well, th- there's also um, oh, what are they called again? Proven not to work. Oaken Ralph says. The, the the EM drive is uh iffy. Let let let's call it that. Yeah, uh, like what, what EM drive they. Like, do... What what you can do is um, you can accelerate particle uh, to like ten or twenty percent of uh, the speed of light, mm-hmm. and then shoot them out the exhaust um, to to accelerate your sh- and um, 
uh, instead of using rocket fuel to do that, which basically is the, the same thing, you use superheated gas and it gets very fast and accelerates you, right? Um, instead of using rocket fuel for that, you can use um, uh, an atomic reactor. And I mean, that's also what? kind of questionable. Wasn't wasn't there also the, the... No, no, it, it works. The questionable I... part about that is getting the reactor into space without some horrible accident happening with an atomic reactor. Yeah, let's just, you know, like, stick this in a, in a rocket and wonder about cooling later. The, um, the other, the, there was another theory too, and I think it was based on string theory. Not that we're going to go into string theory or anything, but basically the particles in front of you, something at the, in the front of you that would make those spread out more. And therefore it would pull you forward because it would take the particles in front of you and make them less dense and would move them toward the back of you and make them more dense. And so you had a push pull that would get you through not only the atmosphere, but out into space. It was... That's, that's kind of how the warp drive works. Mm -hmm. you, you basically, uh, you uh, contract the space itself in front of you and you expand it behind you, right? Yep. So that you, you, that the space itself, that there's less of it to go through in front of you. That's one of the BS warp drive ideas. Yeah, because like at the moment we're still trying to figure out whether or not science yeah. fiction is even close to possible as current science facts. So, well, I mean, it isn't. It's never fact until somebody does it, right? So, you know, remember when you had your flip phone, right? And it looked exactly like a communicator from Star Trek, didn't it? Yeah, so. and uh, and now Razor's bringing the flip phone back. Well, the, the question is, um, did Star Trek predict that that was going to become a thing? Or did the guy who designed the phone just take the idea from Star Trek? Well, let's a little put it this bit way. of column A, a little bit of column B. Probably, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. So but yeah, uh, I, I I I just want to like, you know, I I don't think this got quite the the response I was expecting. Razor are bringing the flip phone back. It's a new generation of people coming into mobile phones. It's like a cycle. It's like fashion. People be like, oh my god, flip phones are so cool. It's like, oh, back in my day we had them. And I'm like, shut up, boomer. You know, back in my day we had rotary phones and pay phones. <laughs> the, the oh, problem pay with that new Razer flip phone... Please deposit a quarter phone. for an additional three minutes. There is no... There is no issue here, Sothershell. You know, it is there, just there, there is one that, with that phone. By the way, it, it, it is. It doesn't have very powerful hardware in it, and for the price, that's kind of. Eh. I mean, yeah. flexible screens. So uh, yeah, that's not a thing yet. That keeps breaking for Samsung, but it's a great idea. Um, no, Sikandar, it's, working, it's working for Razer because um, they they have a way better hinge design than uh, Samsung has. Yeah, that's probably that's a good thing. The um, Sikandar Dick Tracy's wrist radio. We are close to it because my uh, my wristwatch um, can at least Bluetooth to my ears um, without my phone being around. So it, it does to your ears. Yeah, directly because I have Bluetooth capable eardrums. Um, yeah, very special. Uh, very special. Um, getting in on the uh, on the cyber yeah. cybernetics there. Right? No, I have no, I have you know a headset that is Bluetooth, obviously, <laughs> and uh, but my wristwatch does LTE and it can get texts on its own without my phone being around as well as phone calls. 
Um, the phone call comes both my phone and my wristwatch. The only thing that's missing right now is video uh, to go to the Dick Tracy wrist radio. I think Dick Tracy had video, but I'm sure that's coming soon. There are certain smartwatches that already have like cameras and stuff. There you go. Not mine. I have I have a Garmin. It doesn't have one. 5G will fix all that and give you cancer probably. We'll die. I mean, 5G will I, be will be like, you know, the uh, Reaver planet. Most people die of cancer anyway, you know. Cancer's going to get you somehow. May as well be with the future that you want. Cancer's a virus and they're eventually just going to inoculate us all except for the anti-vaxxers and they'll all be dead, so. I mean, the anti-vaxxers are dumb as fuck, so uh, no great loss there. You know what I saw the other day? Thinking of people who have, like, strange things like the Flat Earthers, right? Let's talk about the Flat Earthers here for a minute. So, oh God, somebody... So, I saw a thing about... It showed the solar system, right? And it's all the other planets, and, there's ra- and they're round. And, like, the Earth was, like, this flat little rectangular 3D thing. It's like, what's wrong here? <laughs> Everybody else about that but us, right? Only the Earth is flat. Everybody else is round, right? I know exactly what the issue is there. And there's no tur- and it's the fact that there's no turtle keeping the Earth up. No turtle keeping... What? What? Uh, what what am, I, what am I not understanding, Turk? Why am I lost on a turtle thing? Okay. Eric, you, yes. you're, you're disappointing me here. I, I, I am a disappointment to a number of people, including the, my the parents. Earth. It is a flat yeah. disc on the back of a turtle. Being held up by four elephants on top of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm like, I'm just going to go with it. Seriously? Oh my god, Eric. I, I, I sit there and go, you know, turtles a turtle is at least a half sphere. You know. Did you did you glue like cardboard on the back of the turtle to make it flat? What did you do, Dirk? I mean that's that, that that's, Very patched, Yeah, I mean I mean it's a little culture mean to do to a turtle. How how have you never come across Discworld, Eric? I don't know. I don't know. And by the way, no, I don't watch Doctor Who. Somebody, I have tried to watch Doctor Who like 20 times, and my kids love it. And I'm like, fuck this show, I don't like it. Can't get into I, it. I, Sorry, I think my favorite Doctor, Doctor Who series is still the uh, the series where it first came back with Christopher Eccleston. That season was oh, great. Who's drinking a beer? I heard it's that. Right. He's cracking a cold one out, cracking a cold one out. Arga, what's wrong with goons? This is goon swarm. We're having fun. <laughs> By the way, you do not have to be in goon swarm to be on this show. You could just like come hang out with us. We don't really care if people are goons or not. We care if you're an idiot, but you know. We do. We do. Somehow, soft as I was here. So, so I'm going to talk a little Whoa, bit something because there there aren't very many. Is there is there anybody here who plays uh, Atlas? Other than me, anybody here playing Atlas in the uh, in the uh, audience? Yes, no, maybe. Going once, Bueller. I just, Bueller. I, I just want to point out at launch. No, right now. Send a, a message of a Discord to Dirk. I tried PMs. I tried messaging him in the push to talk Discord, and none of them go through. Discord is having problems right now. That's why our little chat heads aren't working in the corner. I mean, Discord just doesn't want you to talk to me. So, yeah. So yeah, obviously. yeah. So I'm surprised that voice is even working, but they're having some issues. So, um, so this is great. So we're in this big war in Atlas, right? And um, it's funny. So the the head of the group that is fighting us, okay, um, streams every night. Them attacking us, and it has the typical 15 minute delay that 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 Twitch puts into everything, right? But 15 seconds, sorry, delay uh, that Twitch puts into everything, right? So we just sit there and we watch his stream and then we just like, and he knows we're watching the stream and we just take all the intel, like all of it. Like, you know, you put beds down on an island so that you can, you know, fast travel to those islands. They're like gates essentially, right? And you can hang glide between islands and drop bombs. Like, 
We're like, okay, he's coming right over here. Okay, everybody aim over there. Get ready. He's going to appear. Shoot him, right? Or, uh, oh, their beds are down here. Somebody go destroy those beds so that they can't spawn over here anymore, right? It's like Intel, ex I mean, Bonanza, right? And this is the guy that's in charge of the other group, right? And uh, it's, it's, it's stream snipers. Not cool. Nope. We're just saying he's coming. Doesn't matter. He's streaming it. It's, it's he could put a delay trick. in. By the way, it's by the way, these followers. Yeah, these guys talk. I mean, if you think Eve people are toxic, oh my God, these guys talking uh, is so toxic. But on his stream, he's sitting there going like, no mean words. My mods are, are very good. They will ban you for life. You get a lifetime ban if you use mean words in my stream chat. And I'm sitting there going... Oh my God, you guys are, you guys are terrible. You guys have to, you guys have to experience this. It's, it's just, I, I have never, every time I go and play the PVP one-on-one type games, uh, the people are so much more toxic than Eve players. So the people that say that Eve players are terrible and toxic, what I think is Eve players are passionate about the game and they will complain about the game. And they are, and they will bitch and moan about each other, but they are nowhere near as toxic as these other people on the, on the game. Um, and if you want to see toxic, yeah, come play some Rainbow Six Siege with me. Oh my God, no! I I'm not good at those PvK P games to begin with. I really came to Ark or, or Atlas to be honest with you, because I wanted the pirate boat on boat in the ocean. You know, you have to use some tactics based on wind, wind speed, and, and capabilities of your boat, right? But when I came over to that game, it, it is it is basically all land-based PvP. Ah, uh, let's, let, let's be honest. You just wanted to try and be a pirate. No, I, I mean, I actually like to sail. Um, I enjoy sailing. So, um, so sailing the boats and things like that, awesome. But, yeah, it, it is... Pretty much, it, it is land based. It is, it is nothing like being pirates. I mean, they have these. Basically, the uh, the meta of the game, or the, uh, the 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 base weapon that you use, is you get an island close to somebody. You build a tower as high up as you can, and you build lots of uh, gliders and explosive barrels, and you glide between the island and you basically bomb with these explosive barrels. You land where you want to be, and then you just suicide explode the bomb to destroy stuff. That's that's really the the the, the meta of the game at this point, and it is so broken. It just it's terrible. But the only hope that you really have is to rifle snipe them as they very quickly fly over to your island. I mean, I'm I'm with uh, Jalen. Sorry, that probably murdered your name, but, you know, have a more readable name next time. Uh, <laughs> I'm with him when he says uh, Sid Meier's Pirates is the best sailing game ever. That game was fun to sail about and, like, have... Uh... Yeah, you basically, like, use your numpad to sail about, and you get involved in, like, fights and where, where you'd, like, literally be spinning around each other you know firing cannons and what have you and then you'd switch into a boarding action and you'd mm -hmm. end up like fencing with somebody basically and uh yeah it was kind of fun yes you could do all that but nobody does <laughs> <laughs> nobody does it is uh they've got two broken things in in atlas uh one is the glider with the uh with the barrel explosive barrels the other one is apparently the submarine so they have a submarine, which is not supposed to be the fastest thing in the ocean, but it is. It's faster than the fastest boats with the fastest Why? sails, uh, lightly loaded, right? Anything loaded 25% or less is going to go at top speed, right? Okay. And the submarine, I mean, we were, we were, we were chased in a, in a schooner w that was super fast, uh, in high wind, um, and the, uh, the sub outpaced us and, and took us down. And, uh, it's funny. We lasted 45 minutes running away, but it, it kept catching us. Um, I had to bail water for 45 minutes in this boat 
and because uh, we didn't have. Oh look, you found a dumb as fuck mechanic in another game. <laughs> <laughs> Bailing water out of a boat. I was. It did a damn good job, by the way. Uh, yeah, you did pretty well with the citadels too. Yeah, so basically what everybody does is they build something as high as they can and then they stick a uh, lighthouse on top of it and then they climb to the top of that and then they, uh, and then they, you know, f fly between islands. So my thing is, you know what? You need to have boats. You need to come for a, at least if you're going to have land-based PvP, you need to get there by boat and you need to unload your people by boat and you need to go fight and risk your boat, but... You can risk nothing right now in Atlas. It's so broken. Yeah, but, I mean, we don't want our boat, so it's not really risking him, is it? Oh, the, these boats are yeah. are harder to get That's than things me. in Eve. They boat is a wonderful that. mascot. <laughs> so you can't sail a boat by yourself in Atlas. Now that we're we're at the 220 mark, so we're beyond Eve time. Um, but we're going we're gonna to wrap up here soon because I have to go buy a birthday cake. Um... But uh, you can't sail a boat yourself in Atlas um, because you can't. You can. You're going to steer it. And then when the wind changes or you change direction, you've got to run up and move your sails yourself. So you've got to unmount the steering. You'll go straight and run up to each sail and redirect it. Or you go to a free port or get an NPC somewhere and pay them to man your sails. And then you can do it with uh, shift A and D, move your sails. Um so uh so there's some there's some trickery in there but i mean some boats like galleons you can have crews of like 50 something npcs on your boat to do things like fire your cannons right fire, fire your ballistas or whatever else you do so it, i mean there are fun parts of the game and then there are things that are so broken that they're ridiculous but hey what else we got let's go around and do one last thing that was my one last thing i'm done because that's it. Let's start with you, Mist. Um, Titan hey. and Relay coming Summer Club are making a comeback. They're going to be selling some very expensive items, including the Raven State issue at only seven billion ish a ticket, depending on how much flex price is going to be with the cause. Uh, you know, uh, rumor has it you might have a the Gigax corpse. One of how many? I be yes. So one thing I did want to talk about, no one completely forgot, was that the Gigax has like a limited was a limited run. It was an exciting limited run of only thirty three corpses, and I scooped up one of them. And the thing is, we're selling it before. In contracts, it just turns up as a frozen corpse, but with the hyphenate relay, you would actually tell you which corpse it is. So I'm looking to be able to offer that on the hyphenate. I'm not sure what price to ask for, but that is an exclusive. You won't be able, you can't make any more of them. Any corpse collectors in the audience, please get in touch with Mr. Warden. He'd like <laughs> to know about reasonable pricing schemes. Reasonable pricing schemes for his, his things. Um, the uh, I may or may not have a total newbie corpse, too. Um, the uh, thirty-three, huh? Who knows what, mis what which beer has a mysterious thirty-three on the inside of its label? If you look from the back of the bottle into the back of the front label, who uh, who knows that in the audience? Anyone? There we go, Sikander Rolling Rock, baby. Who used to be really a really good beer until Budweiser bought it. But yes, I mean Budweiser just turns anything they touch into piss water basically yes it was made in latrobe because they don't call latrobe they call it latrobe pennsylvania and by the way if you drove to latrobe and bought it uh it was noticeably fresher and yummy i used to have to drive there and pick up a couple cases and take it to my buddy in dc before they would uh s send them around so yes all righty uh dirk you're one last thing um, my one last thing is that I'm feeling really nostalgic this week. Uh, Halo, the Master Chief Collection, launched on Tuesday. Uh, Halo is a game that I was playing when I was, like, really young. And, uh, for it to have come back, uh, on PC properly is, uh, it's just got me hitting all the right nostalgic kind of 
can all of us. Uh, so I've been really enjoying that this week. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed Halo, uh, the when it was a thing, you should definitely go and check it out. Nice, nice. Uh, I will. I will say. I will say something about a Master Chief thing, but I want to let uh, Soth get his one last thing in here before he does it. Well, uh, I got nothing. Got nothing? All right, I'll go with my thing. So th I forget which one was like a media something, like one of those, you know, stores that was going out of business that had lots of electronic stuff in video games, okay, in the mall. It's going out of business. They had a giant life-size Master Chief, like, coming up to the top of the peak, okay? And my boys wanted it so bad. I offered the store manager $500 for it, and he said, no, it's going to my house. <laughs> Here's so, a story for you. Yeah. Um, did you know that Microsoft wanted to to make uh, a Halo movie? I did not uh, know. They actually they already had a budget done for. It. They already had a director who already started shooting for the movie. So they had a script and everything. Um, the director's name was Neil Blomkamp. Um, after about like half a year of production, um, they decided that they they didn't want that movie. Um, so instead, Neil Blomkamp took what he already had done for the Halo movie and made District Nine with that. Oh wow! I did not know that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's like cool. they've done a couple of live action things in the like over the years. There's actually a trailer for uh, for the movie uh, they, they were making, and it looks amazing. I'll tell you the movie I really... When I was in sixth grade, I dreamed of a Lord of the Rings trilogy movie thing, and that eventually came out. The one I would really like to see, and if you have not read Philip Jose Farmer's books, the Riverworld series, they're fabulous. I'd love to see those made into a movie. I mean... We, we had a conversation earlier on where you had no idea what Discworld was, Eric, so I'm kind of judging your literary recommendations hey, a little bit right now. Seriously, you have never read Riverworld? No. I oh my god, you need to. You need to. Um, you absolutely need to. You really gotta read Discworld, and here's another oh, one you need to read. Um, that uh, is actually closer to Eve, actually. Uh, it's called Old Man's War. There's a whole series of books for that as well. Okay. I have been, over the last several years, very lax in reading anything. I used to read... My wife and I were big readers. I mean, we have... Upstairs, we have a library of all the books that we have read throughout our life. We kept them all. And the, uh, the last couple of years, we just haven't read much i mean sort of true series the last series i really 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 read that and um game of thrones the books before it was uh tv shows those are the last two things i really read i need to start the game of thrones it. books are actually pretty great um they're, they're very very different to the tv show but actually pretty mm -hmm. great um but yeah i'm kind of in that many in that issue with uh with books uh because my my mom's trying to move house or, or is trying yeah. to get ready to move house and basically like probably 85 to 90 percent of the books in that house are mine and i'm ah. away at uni so i don't have space for them at the moment uh -oh. and so it's like okay and they um, don't like to move books movers do not like to move books well you know my my sister's like well, I could box up all of your books for you. And I'm like, what? No. 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 By the way, oh, Jillian. They're, they're my books. <laughs> I have reading glasses now as well. Um, the uh, I do not remember the exact time in my life when I read the Riverworld books, but I but it was, um, it was before I was married, so it was more than 20 years ago. And at that time, they were all out of print. The only way to get them was aftermarket. Um, but now you can go on Amazon and they've reprinted everything. Um, and they've even taken some of the books and combined them into a single book, um, in a printing. So you can just buy one book, get three. Um, the titles are, are outstanding. Like the, the, the title of the first book is to your, 
to your shattered bodies go or scattered bodies go one of those two um i should i should have really looked that up before i did it been a while since i read them but they are fabulous that actually sounds pretty uh basically I'll, I'll tell you the concept okay to your scattered bodies go and the second book is the fabulous river book basically picture a world okay where the cliffs are so high that nobody can scale them and the cliffs okay. zigzag from north pole to south pole and then south pole to north pole the river flows okay. north to south on one side and south to north on the other and in, in the north pole you can't get to its giant lake okay um you have to live in this river valley okay Everybody in this river valley, okay, at the beginning of the river valley is the beginning of mankind's time. At the end is the end of his time. And it's a certain year, 19-something. Okay? Right. Everybody who has lived and was above the age of, I think, nine or something, in those time frames are born along the river valley. Obviously, people from, like, the year zero to 62, um are uh, 70% of the population at, in the first mile, right? But then you have a percentage of the population from any time period in any distributed across it, okay? So basically, as you get further around, you get to, um, you know, more modern people, but there are no natural resources. So, so in the beginning, there's no mining for anything and everybody has a grail attached to their wrist by a strap and there's these giant mushroom things every so many miles and you stick your grail into the hole and there's a giant eruption of uh, electricity and power and you pull your grail out and it has all the food and things that you need but it's a random set of food some of it may be from your time period some of it may be from other ethnicities Sometimes there's drugs, sometimes there's alcohol. It's this, it's very interesting. This sounds weird as fuck, but I kind of oh, feel like... Oh, and I you're naked and hairless. I mean, that was a random fact to just, like... <laughs> it, but it's true, and it, and it plays into the, the whole thing. Um, and, uh, and you don't want to go swimming because there's giant fish who will eat you. Right. So you're... This born... sounds like it might be a... Yeah, worth the while. Worth and a look. it talks about the different types of, uh, you know, the government. So think about all the famous people that, that were alive, right? And how many characters they can just pull from history and build this story around. Yeah. Right? So And they do. And they pick a few of them, and it's quite interesting um, what they do. And then, of course, nobody knows why they're there. <laughs> or how they got there. And uh, some of it's the quest to figure out why they're there, because they all died. Bar Ghost, that is potentially what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about Eric's face we We're talking about the, uh, the River World I can, I series. I can confirm that the book is roughly like that. Roughly like one of Eric's fetish dreams. Yes. Like, no, that's no my description, <laughs> not my... Not my thing, but hey, but it, I I do I did enjoy the books tremendously. They were fantastic, and everybody that I've said to read them has loved them. Now, Sci-Fi tried to do a River World thing, and it was horrible. So don't watch it. Um, it's it's quite terrible. Oh, I, and you know what? The Summer Bean. I will save. I'll take a picture of of what you did there. And I will, I will tell Mrs. Eric, uh, happy birthday. Um, because, uh, I did not tell it to her when she woke up because she woke up and went running today and I was asleep because I was up all night fighting in Atlas. So, yep. Discord outage everywhere. And Pockets recruiting. You, you want to hear my synopsis of Altman's War? Of Altman's War? Yeah, let's do it. Right. Uh, imagine, um, that we had... Uh, some kind of space force. I'm just going to call it that. And they would have way better technology than the rest of the world, right? And you could sign up for them. And at the age of, let's say, 65, 
right? So when you're old and brittle, um, there you, you would basically serve like one year in that space force, and no one knows what happens to you because no one ever comes back. Um, once once you sign up and you have done your one year, you have to live on on the the colonies, right? Instead of on Earth, and no information from the colonies is coming back to Earth because this the space force is controlling all of the information. Quote unquote the colonies. The colonies, yes. <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna send all of these old timers off to the farm, you know. So, Sounds like Logan's Run. It uh it basically follows this um this old man who who signed up and is now like getting to to that age and um yeah he's basically leaving earth and finding out what the fuck they are doing with a bunch of 65 year olds who are like, barely standing up probably something to do with like reconstituted protein oh look they, they have lots of interesting ideas uh God damn it, Sakanda, you will go to the farm and you will like it. Soylent Green is people. Oh, come on! No spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. I do strongly recommend. It was a Hugo Award winning uh, book, the uh, the first one, To Your Scattered Bodies Go, by uh, Philip Jose Farmer. I thought the first book was great, but... I don't know. Like it's it's been some time I've read them. Mm -hmm. It was like the third book I think where where it kind of started dragging a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you know writers get tired. I mean, have you read the the Expanse books? No, I tried. I I died. I, I I really really like them. Although the I think it's the third book or the fourth book, the one on Eilus, um, that one's definitely the weakest. Yeah, probably. Alrighty, folks, we have to. I have to go because I truly have to buy this cake. Well, well, I will be in a lot of trouble here. tonight with the wife, and I call her the wife. Capital T, capital W, the wife. She's a big deal. <laughs> so, anything else that you guys want to say before we go? It's just the two of us, Eric. Everyone else disconnected by now. They left. Oh my god. Well, welcome to the Eric and Sothersil show without Mist, <laughs> because you know Mist is just on video, not on sound. He's just there to make this place look good. I think Discord is dying. Discord may be dying, and we probably should go. So thank you, everybody, for the uh, for the subs, for the follows. Uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for hanging around and listening to us, like, ramble on forever after we did the Eve stuff. Um, and uh, everybody, uh, you know, have a great weekend. And we will see you 1 o'clock Saturday Eastern, 1800 UTC, next Saturday. We'll be here. Thanks, folks. Have a great day. Oh, look, and I get the push buttons on my stream deck again, so I'm happy. permit i don't care if you buy a permit do you know how little i actually care if you have a permit <laughs>
Just like can't, simple, can't simple break. shit like that. No, nope, oh, simple oh. shit like that. If she need, can't answer I that, need to probably... in. I need to break in because I need more original every week. That's that's a goal. Do you really actually get oh, paid for uh, that? Because you 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 deserve money for that last one. That one I'm was gonna, a fun thing. Drink. 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 Dr